Good evening. My name is Ann Carmichael, and I want to thank you all for joining this evening, and thank you, Ms. Langston, for inviting me to present. I do want to ask everyone to make sure that your microphones are on mute. I am continuing to admit um, students and their parents, so please be patient with me. We'll, we will get started. Ms. Langston, would you like to say anything before we begin? All right, well, maybe at the end of the presentation, you'd like to say a few words to your students. We're going to talk tonight about the college financial aid process. Some of you may have gone through the process in the past, um, either yourself or you have an older child. But tonight we're going to talk about some of the challenges. Um, you want to start preparing to pay for college, and that will include more than just tuition. You will find that you're going to be responsible for paying for your equipment, your books and supplies, any personal expenses that you might incur that you may not have been incurring when living at home. Of course, room and board and tuition and fees. Now, your tuition is most often listed on your college's websites, but please be aware that you are going to see some fees listed on your um, on your first fee bill. Uh, fees could include athletic, parking, library fees. There uh, are technology fees. So you do need to keep this in mind when planning to pay for college. But the good news is that financial aid <clears throat> is available from the U.S. Department of Education, the state of Louisiana, your college or your career school, and then other nonprofit and private organizations. Now, there are three types of federal student aid. I like to reorder these on this slide. There's your free money, of course, which does not have to be repaid. Then your earned money, I like to put in second place, and then your last um, option would be student loans. Now you can see here during the 23-24 academic year, these are all of the federal programs that are available to help you pay for the academic year. Those who were in college this year could have received a federal Pell Grant or a federal Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant. They could be uh, receiving the Teacher Educational Assistance for College and Higher Education, or TEACH grant, or the Iraq and Afghanistan Service Grant. Federal Work Study would be your earned money, and then you see these federal loans that you could be offered. You'll see that there are direct subsidized loans, unsubsidized loans, and PLUS loans. The subsidized and unsubsidized loans are in the student's name. They will borrow. There's no credit check required. However, for the direct plus loans, these loans would be in the parent's name if the parent chooses to borrow on the student's behalf. As I mentioned, federal work study is a great opportunity for you to earn money while you're in school with a very flexible schedule. These jobs also look great on your first professional resume. So if you're going to a four-year college and you work in the bursar's office, um, you will be able to list that on your first resume. I spoke briefly about student loans. Let's talk a little bit about the difference between them. The direct subsidized loan is a need-based loan. These are federal loans that are offered to students who have financial need. Direct unsubsidized loans are basically for every student. Subsidized loans have the interest waived while the student is in school. Unsubsidized loans do accrue interest while the student is in college. Both of these will go into repayment once the student graduates or ceases 
to attend. So if you see a loan offer on your financial aid award letter, you always want to accept the subsidized portion first. You can remember this by telling yourself that the you and unsubsidized means that you always pay the interest on that loan. All of these monies can be used at four-year public and private colleges, community colleges, career and technical schools for part-time and online college courses. They are, however, um, all initiated by completion of the free application for federal student aid known as the FAFSA. Now I'm checking the chat box and I do want to thank um, the, the party that asked everybody to be sure and mute yourselves. That way that we won't have any interruptions during the presentation. Thank you. It's important to understand that there are going to be deadlines. You will have your college financial aid priority oh. deadlines. Most colleges do give students an opportunity to be first in line to receive federal student aid. And remember, these monies are given to each college from federal student aid to help their students pay for their courses on their campus. But they are um, awarded on a first come first served basis. So make sure you're meeting that priority financial aid deadline. If you're using the FAFSA for your TOPS application, there will be a deadline, and um, you can check the Louisiana Office of Student Financial Aids um, or LOSFA's website to find out what that deadline is. And then, of course, there are federal deadlines as well. I'm going to go ahead and mute a couple of people if you don't mind. Thank you. Now, who can complete the FAFSA? Of course, U.S. citizens and U.S. nationals, those who have a green card or an arrival departure record, those with battered immigrant status, and those who have a T visa. Now, if you are um, not quite sure what sort of documentation you have, you can always contact me directly or call Federal Student Aid for um, verification. Before you get started on the FAFSA itself, which we're being told by federal student aid will be released by December 31st. I hope we're not all up on New Year's Eve completing the FAFSA and hopefully it'll start and open a little bit early, but we do know that it will open by December 31st. This gives you plenty of time to start collecting your documents. That way, it will take very uh, little time to complete the FAFSA. Those documents include the student and parents' most recent social security cards, the student and parents' 2022 federal income tax returns, if you filed one, your W-2 wage and tax statements. There could be information on these forms that is not listed on the tax return and you might need to manually provide this information. And then any investment accounts, cash savings, checking, all must be reported as of the date you submit the FAFSA. So start thinking about that. One thing we can do now is create your federal student aid ID. This form of identification is your electronic signature. It's going to be used to start your FAFSA and then to sign it once you complete the form. The student and one, at least one of his parents must create an FSA ID. Now, if you find that you do need 
more than one parent's information from the IRS. Let's say a student may have parents who filed um, married single. Then each parent will need an FSA ID to download their information from the IRS and drop it into the FAFSA itself. Use only your personal information. You cannot share an email address or, or mobile phone number when creating an ID. So make sure that you have all your um, documentation ready and you can begin your FSA IDs today. This is the form that we use when working with students. You can see the information. You will have to use your own personal email address. You'll create your own username, provide a password. You'll receive a backup code. All of this helps you to um, Well, I'm so sorry. Now I'm going to interrupt with a phone call. Um, all of this will help you in case you need to uh, retrieve your information later. Once FAFSA does become available for the 2425 academic year, which is the FAFSA that you all want to complete, you're going to be um, completing a FAFSA for the academic year that you're going to be in college. If you log in now, you will see that you could begin the 2324 form, but that is for students who are attending during this academic year. The student or contributor will enter his username and password to log in and then be asked what his role is. Are you the student entering the form to complete the student section of the FAFSA? Or are you a parent who needs to contribute to that student's FAFSA? The information that you provided in the FSA ID will be displayed. This is your uh, a good time to check over to make sure that all of your information is correct. If you need to make any changes, you'll want to go back into the settings and update your FSA ID before you continue. New this year is the consent form. Every contributor must consent to have their information transferred from the IRS and dropped into the FAFSA. This is how the FAFSA has been simplified this year because much more information is coming from the IRS than in prior years. If you do not consent to have your information um, moved from the IRS into the FAFSA, you will not be eligible <clears throat> for federal student aid. The student will be asked information about himself. You can see that there are five sections in the FAFSA itself in the student section, the personal circumstances, demographics, financials, colleges, and then it's time for the student to sign the FAFSA. It's important that students, um, seniors in high school, report that they are first year freshmen. Even if you have worked hard and you've taken your AP courses and you're going to, or you've clipped out of courses and you're gonna have some college credit, for FAFSA purposes, you should be reporting that you are in your first year. You will then move into the section where it's going to be, um, your information is going to be used to determine whether you are an independent or a dependent student. Now, I know everybody feels like, well, I'll be 18. Certainly, I'm independent. But for FAFSA purposes, you must be able to answer yes to one of these questions. These are in the student personal circumstances section. Let's go over them quickly. The student is currently serving on active duty in the U.S. Armed Forces for purposes other than training. So if you're going on, graduating, going into boot camp, 
That's considered training. You cannot answer yes to that question. Is the student a veteran of the U.S. Armed Forces? Does the student have children or other people who live with him and receive more than half of their support from the student? At any time since the student turned 13, was he an orphan with no living biological or adoptive parents? At any time since he turned 13, was he a ward of the court or in foster care or an emancipated minor as determined by a court in the state of Louisiana? And then is the student in legal guardianship with someone other than a parent or step parent as determined by a court in our state? Now, if you can answer yes to just one of these questions, you will be considered an independent student and you will not be asked to provide parental information. However, you need to collect this documentation now because the um, financial aid office is going to ask for it before they can um, provide you with your financial assistance. Next, the student is going to be asked questions about his parents. These questions are used to determine which parent or parents will be contributing to the FAFSA itself. This is something new. If you have children who have completed a FAFSA in the past, that student was asked to provide information about his parent or parents who he lived with the longest in the past 12 months. This year and going forward, students will report the parent or parents who provided him with the most financial support in the past 12 months. Um, not necessarily not necessarily the person who claimed them on the tax return, but often that is the parent. So this section will guide you through the process of determining who those parents are. The student will then be asked to provide information about that parent or parents. And you'll notice here that there's quite a bit of information that will be asked of the student to provide about that parent contributor. Um, many people are concerned be this year because students must report names, date, uh, birth date, social security numbers of each parent contributor. So we are really encouraging more than ever that students and parents sit down together to complete the FAFSA. Students will then move to the demographics section to ask information about themselves. And then on into the financial section. Now, remember that the student is going to be asked about his income from 2020, if he received any. And these are working wages, not any federal benefits, not social security um, income, just working wages from 2022 and assets as of the date the student is submitting the FAFSA. Students will be asked to provide a list of all of the colleges that they're considering and they can enter up to 20. If you plan to apply to more than 20 colleges, you can do so. However, you will have to Complete the FAFSA with your 20 colleges listed. Wait for the form to be processed. Then you can go back in and add additional colleges. Because federal student aid is not going to provide every college, school across the country with your personal information, you must give them permission to do so. And it's a lot easier to list those colleges now, get that over with, than having to go in throughout the academic year or through the summer and add colleges. Then you can see here that the student has completed all of the sections. And this is a good time for the student to review his FAFSA summary. So by using those little down arrows next to each um, section, you can open up the form and see every question 
that the student was asked and his answers to them. There's a hyperlink to, uh, to each question. If you do need to make a change, use that hyperlink to take you back directly to that question. The student is told that his FAFSA has now been shared. His FAFSA invitation has now been shared with each contributor that he listed. This goes to the contributors via email. And then those contributors can begin working on their section of the FAFSA. If you need to make any edit changes or you need to invite someone else or remove someone, you can do so at this point. Now it's time for the student to sign his form. Remember that this is a legal document. You are um, stating when you sign it that the information you've provided is correct to the best of your knowledge. This is what we're told the parent or contributor will receive once the student sends an invitation. It lets him know that the student is requesting his participation in the process. So now it's time for the parent or contributor to begin with his username and password. He'll log in. He'll be asked to provide consent to have his information from the IRS transferred into the student's FAFSA and then began answering specific information about himself or herself. He'll complete the demographic section. These are an exact mirror of what the student has been asked. Parents will be asked about their finances from 2022 and their assets as of the date they submit the FAFSA. Parents will be asked if anyone in their family has received these federal benefits. And if you have, fine. If you have not, please choose none of the above. Then tax information will begin to be transferred over. Information will be asked of the parents about their tax filing status, um, and it will help them move on to the transfer process. Family size will be asked. Of course, the student, and if he's been told, if he, they've been told that there are two contributors, a mom and a dad, of course, those three are already counted, but are there any other dependents in the contributor's household? Now, a student may live with one parent his parents may be separated or divorced. The other parent may have been determined to be the contributor because he provided the most financial support. At that point, they want to know the family size of that contributor. We've moved on into the tax portion of the FAFSA. These are the only questions that you will be asked. Everything else will be transferred from the IRS as far as income goes. Then it's time for the parent to sign. Remember to check your answers, review the FAFSA summary with the drop down arrows, and agree that you have provided the information to the best of your ability. Now, once the parent has signed the FAFSA, if the student has completed his section and the parents now completed his section, the FAFSA can be submitted. If you are in a situation where you do not live with your biological parents, let's say you live with grandparents or other relatives, remember, that you must provide information about your biological or adoptive parents. You never want to list anyone else's information on the FAFSA. If your grandparents are your legal parents, say they've adopted you, 
That's great. Then their information will be provided because they are now your legal parents. If they have legal guardianship of you and you have documentation showing that from a, a court in the state of Louisiana, then you are an independent student and you will not need their information on your FAFSA. This can be a tricky um, um, determination. So if you have questions, uh, don't be shy about asking. Once your FAFSA is submitted, the information is going to go to each of the schools that you've listed. They will begin to work on a financial aid offer for you. They're trying to determine your net price. They know the, your cost of attendance. They're looking for grants and scholarships to help you pay for your cost of attendance, but any residual, you will be responsible for paying for that academic year. You will be receiving a financial aid offer from your colleges. Most often colleges wait until you've completed your admissions applications and your admissions requirements. So make sure you're getting that done this fall. Once they do receive that information, they will provide you with a financial aid offer. Hold on, I want to mute somebody. They will provide you with a financial aid offer. It does not always look like this, but it will definitely line item your cost of attendance, each of the costs, any grants or scholarships that you will receive by going to their college, any loans that they can offer you to meet that net price. And then of course, if you are interested in work study, um, that will be listed as well if you've let the college know that you're interested. You always want to accept your financial aid in this order. Scholarships and grants should be accepted first. That is gift aid and you do not have to repay it. Next is federal work study. You've worked and earned this money. You don't have to pay it back. And then last would be your loans. And remember, only to borrow what you need to complete your academic year. I know that you're already looking for scholarships. Your counselors and college coaches have probably already talked to you about these. And they are your best source of um, information about scholarships. But you will be able to find them at your college or your career school nonprofit organizations, uh, local businesses, community groups, social organizations all have, um, may have money available to help you pay for college. Leela is offering several $1,000 FAFSA completion scholarships this year. If you are planning to complete a FAFSA, you can apply early this QR code will take you directly to the application. So if you have your devices ready and you want to um, apply for this scholarship now, I'm gonna give you a couple of seconds to do that. We're offering also offering a Choose Louisiana scholarship, several of these. For those of you who plan to attend a college in the state of Louisiana, we want to make sure that we keep you here in the state. So you can use this QR code to apply for that scholarship. This is for Louisiana seniors, who, uh, high school seniors who plan to attend college here in Louisiana, or if you are already in college or you have an older sibling who's in school here in the state, they are also eligible to apply. Now, if you do not receive enough money in federal aid to pay for your net uh, price, Leela does administer a nonprofit education loan program to help you meet those needs. It's called Leela Choice, and you can find out more about that on our website at leela.org. 
remember to keep all of your information in a very safe place because you're going to use it every year that you're in college. You will have to complete a, a FAFSA for every academic year if you wish to continue receiving financial aid. We hope to distribute our FAFSA completion guides for the class of 2024. This is a free resource for all Louisiana high school seniors. Um, federal student aid has really been dragging their feet about all of the rules and details about the FAFSA this year, so it has been a bit delayed. But if you've registered for this session or applied for one of these scholarships, you will be one of the first to receive this guide. My name is, of course, is Ann Carmichael, as I mentioned earlier, and this is my email address. If you want to speak to me directly about anything that was covered this evening, or you have other questions or personal questions that you don't want to discuss this evening, um, please make a note of this, and we can start a conversation via email. Now I'm going to take a look in the chat box. If you have questions and you do want to ask them in this public forum, please feel free to do so. Our first question is, is TOPS funding included in the college financial aid package? TOPS is usually awarded, I'm going to say, late May, early June, because the TOPS office does have to um, compile information about your achievement test scores, uh, they need your um, they need your high school transcript, and all of that takes a little bit of time. So the colleges aren't quite sure yet. Probably by the time they send out their financial aid awards, if your top scholarship is available to that information is available to your college, they could show it on your award letter. But if not, make sure that you are tallying that manually. We have had a couple of people that are have just entered the, the session. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you know I will be sending a copy of this presentation on to Ms. Langston, Dr. Langston. Um, so you will be able to view it a little bit later as well. Okay. Here's our next question. What if a grandparent was a financial contributor along with the parents? If that grandparent is your legal parent, then yes, he will provide information about himself. But if not, if he is just a very generous grandparent, then he will not provide his financial information on the student's FAFSA. Can a parent use an ID that was set up years ago for a different child? And that's a great question. Yes, the federal student aid ID was initiated in 2016. So if you created an FSA ID after or during 2016 or after, your FSA ID is still valid. However, if your student is a bit older than that, or say you had a, a federal ID, it was called the PIN. It was a simple four uh, number identifi identifier. That has been um, retired. So if you created that ID before 2016, you are gonna have to create a new ID. Otherwise, you are set to go, but it's important that you go back into that FSA ID and make sure that everything is up to date. Your email address, your uh, mailing address, um, date of birth, make sure that everything is correct before you begin working on your seniors FAFSA. 
Oh, here's a question from Dr. Langston. Since both parents were mentioned in the model student, Rhea, does that mean that both parents' financial income is considered not just the parent who makes the most money? That's a really good question. When the student begins to answer information about his living situation and his financial contributions from parents, that parent, the parent who provided the most financial support will be identified. That will be the only parent who provides information on the student's FAFSA. So let's say mom and dad are divorced or separated. You've determined that dad provided the most financial support. Only dad's information will be listed on the FAFSA. Unless dad is now remarried, and then dad and step parent will be listed on the student's application as parents. I know it's brand new this year and it's even confusing to me as I say it, but it is um, going to be a lot simpler to identify those specific contributors. If you have questions, call federal student aid or email me directly, but we'll all be, uh, in the learning process again this year. Does anyone else have a question? A, a lot of questions that, many of the questions that we're asked are about who a student should report as his parents or they're known as contributors. Um, and that identification process can be tedious. But as I mentioned, we're told that it's going to be a lot simpler for the student to identify those parents. I will, again, encourage you to sit down with your student to complete the FAFSA because you may be a better determiner of who that parent is going to be. When can we start filing the FAFSA. Um, we have been told by federal student aid that the FAFSA will open by December 31st. So they have not get, given an open date. We do not know. We've asked them. Everybody's wondering what, when to put uh, jot that down on their calendars. Just know that the FAFSA will be available by December 31st. If you are um, one of my contacts, if you've applied for a scholarship or you have um, completed uh, a form to participate in this session, I will be letting you all know the moment I hear the FAFSA is open. To clarify, if parents are married, do both parents need to provide financial information. Yes, if both, if your parents are married, your biological parents, you will report demographic and financial information about both of those parents. If you're in a situation, I'll repeat, if you're in a situation where your biological parents are your legal parents, but they're not living together and they're not married, you will be asked to provide information about the parent who provided you with the most financial support. It might not be the parent you're living with, but if the other parent provided you with more financial support in the 12 months prior to the date you submit the FAFSA, then that parent will be listed as a contributor on your FAFSA, not the parent you're living with, if that is your situation. And then, of course, if the parent who provided you with the most financial support is married to someone else, you must now provide information about that step parent. How can I obtain an FSA ID if I don't know it? 
if I did this for another child? Um, if you're not sure, if you have created an FSA ID or you don't recall, you can go on to the FSA ID website. You can um, begin to create a FAFSA. And if your information is already in the system, it will prompt you to retrieve that information. And it will take you through the steps to do so. So remember, you want to start off with the student creating an FSA ID and then and then determine which parent provided you with the most financial support in the past 12 months. And that parent will need an FSA ID as well. Can you think of any other questions? I know they most often arrive arise when you are in the form itself. So don't hesitate to contact me or to contact Federal Student Aid directly. And I'm going to type in Federal Student Aid's number here in the chat box. Okay, here's another question. What if both parents are divorced, but living with one, but both parents distributed finances equally? And that's a good question that we often are asked. Um, we are told that this year and going forward, the parent if you, if you cannot identify the parent who provided you with the most financial support in the past 12 months, then you should report the parent with the greater income in 2022. So if you believe your parents provided you with the exact amount of financial support in the past 12 months, then you will select the parent with the greatest income that will be your parent contributor. Let me make sure I didn't miss any questions, but these are some excellent questions. Well, I think that we have exhausted all the questions in the chat. I look forward to hearing from you if you have questions or if you're planning to apply for the um, scholarships, they will come directly to me and I'm looking forward to, to receiving those. Please complete your IDs right now and record those and set your um dials for December 31st. We all may be up on New Year's on Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve completing our FAFSAs. I want to thank you again for inviting me. Dr. Langston, did you want to say anything? She's a great resource for you all. She's been doing this for years. So please feel free to um to contact her here's another question if parents are married and file taxes jointly when the student is providing parent info will two invites be needed one for each parent if parents are married filing jointly only one parent will need an FSA ID. I have not seen the FAFSA yet. I do not know if both parents are going to receive an email notification because at that point, 
I don't mm -hmm. know if federal student aid knows how they filed their returns, um, but if they do file Mary jointly, either one of the parents can apply for an FSA ID and use it to retrieve their information from the um, from the IRS. But if you have a situation where your parents, say your parents are married or your biological parents are unmarried, but they do live in the same household and they file Mayor, I'm thinking if they file married separate returns, so mom filed her own return, dad filed his return, both of those parents are going to need IDs because they will both have to um, retrieve their information from the IRS because it's two different returns. Each tax filer will need an ID. I'm going to go back to um, the slide because someone is asking about the, the website for the FSA ID. And if you want to email me directly, I can send you our, um, sorry, close your eyes if this is triggering. Um, if you want a copy of this form sent directly to you, I'm happy to do that. These are live links. And um, you can use this also to um, record your information. But to create your student aid ID, you can see that the web address is studentaid.gov slash FSA dash ID slash create dash account slash launch. And we don't know why it's so long. You used to just be able to go to fsaid.gov. Or you can always go directly to the FAFSA website at studentaid.gov. And then on the homepage, you can select create an account. If you want individual assistance with your FAFSA, there is a QR code on this form as well um, that will notify me that you want some individual help. Um, either with your ID or once the FAFSA opens, I'm happy to help out. Okay, let's see. I might have one more message, one more. Oh, thank you, Dr. Langston. Thank you for inviting me. All right, so I'm going to close out the meeting since I don't see any more messages, but look forward to hearing from you if you need assistance. Have a great academic year and good luck to each of you. Good night.